at what point exactly do the contingent resources become reserves? I mean, is there some uh, additional um, exploration appraisal work that will then determine, or you can say, okay, now it's become from a contingent resource to a proven or a probable reserve? At what point does it really change? Yeah, that, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it, it comes up um, uh, quite often. Um, uh, contingent resources, um, uh, they, they have a, a, a certain um, um, criteria which are not, uh, uh, which prevent them from becoming um, um, reserves. Uh, essentially, it could be the government has not approved your field development plan, as an example. So you've got a field development plan for your project, it will remain in the contingent resources until the government has actually approved it. Um, that's one. Second, uh, maybe if you've got a joint venture, maybe three or four different uh, companies are um, uh, in a joint venture, they're partners in the soil field, and uh, one or two of them, they do, do not have the money to finance uh, the project development, then uh, it still will remain a contingent resource. You have to have the finance in place. There's a whole uh, series of uh, elements which uh, need to be uh, 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 satisfied. Um, for example, uh, for, uh, as a, if there's a gas field and um, it's in a remote location, and if you don't have the pipeline in place uh, and you don't have the funding for the pipeline and the environmental and regulatory approvals in place, then again, it will not be reserves. It will remain in contingent resource. So you, there's, a, there's a whole series of elements which need to be satisfied first before moving into reserves. Um, uh, so, uh, but uh, remember how to discriminate between prospective resources and contingent resources. And uh, never move them into reserves until all the approvals uh, have been um, have been agreed, or sorry, have have been satisfied. Uh, reserves come in uh, again three different uh, sizes, if you will: one uh, p, two p, three p. Or if you're using um, probabilistics, it's uh, p uh, ninety, p fifty, and p ten, and prove probable possible. And uh, the the key thing here is to uh, recognize that the proved reserves have the highest value. So the reserves have the highest value. So they could be anywhere from uh, $15, even $25 a barrel. So you can see the value goes up from your expiration to discovered to um, actual uh, producing. So the valuation goes increases as you go up. So the, that's what's reflected in the right hand side. It's the commerciality. So uh, remember reserves they generate revenue. For resource to become reserves, they must be economic, economically viable. So in this kind of oil price scenario, does it mean that most of the reserve numbers now become resource for, for the oil companies? Yeah, yeah the, the reserves are, uh, um, uh, that's a good question as well. Um, they, the comp let, let's just uh, give a specific example here. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I was the reserves, um, um, a sign-off authority for Europe for Shell for years, and uh, uh, so Shell is listed in the uh, New York Stock Exchange. So uh, every company listed in the uh, New York Stock Exchange, um, uh, they have to um, report their reserves, proved reserves annually, um, proved reserves. But you can also report probable and possible reserves if you wish. Uh, it's it's not a requirement but they may make that a requirement in the future. Um, so you have to assess the proved reserves every year. And there are very specific uh, um, requirements how you assess those. And there's an oil price. So the oil price uh, which you have to use in order to assess your proved reserves are based on a 12-month average for the previous year. So as an example, um, <clears throat> This, uh, um, for 2014, uh, the way you would calculate the oil price for this year would be the, uh, it would be arithmetic average 
of the oil price on the first day of each month of the 12 months, okay, in the year. Um, uh, so for the last couple of months, that's going to impact uh, the overall, the average for the year, right? And then what, when you run your economics, so the economics will be always forward, beginning of the 2015 to the whenever the, um, the oil, pro oil uh, production is going to cease on that particular project, then you have to run it on a flat oil price based on that the previous year. Uh, so indeed, say this year's average oil price comes to, I don't know, $80, let's say. So that's the $80 you will use uh, for forward projection. So if last year, the oil price, average oil price for 2013 was, let's say, $100. So it's gone down by 20%. So obviously, your reserves are going to go down. So you have to do that every year. 